God save the queen. <laughs> <laughs> God shave the queen, so she has a good impact on the pigeons. <laughs> so we've been getting a lot of questions about all the equipment that we use every day and what we think we like the most and how our guns are set up in general. So uh, we'll start with the one that started it all. The queen, the queen bee, the crown. Um, that was our first gun that we wanted to purchase, or that I wanted to purchase, but you know, Norm is, uh, pretty into this too so I think he got his two impacts before my crown actually showed up <laughs> but uh, come on in a little closer um, this is just your standard crown I don't have anything in here that modded it to craziness there's no power kit in it um, everything is exactly as it came except stuff I could actually bolt on so I have a Harris bipod on here um, it is a swivel version and it's the bench rest with the adjustable legs um, I do like it. I've been using it for a long time. I'm starting to get very jealous of the AccuTax after seeing um, Bob use his in person. Um, so I might make a change there. I already have um, this monopod. I think this is actually made by AccuTax too. It's been, been a long time I've been using this. Um, and this is great. It works um, a lot like the one on the back of the Impact, except it's a little quicker. You know, I can go up, down. And then this is my fine and it can twist too. So a lot of people have been asking about that. It's not hard to get. You can get it on Amazon. They're about 90 bucks. Um, we almost, well, if we had the money, we would exclusively use Night Forces. Um, they are the best, hands down. I have tried to wear this scope out. And while the clicks are gone in the middle and it's just, you know, smooth as butter and you can't audibly hear it, it still tracks perfectly. Um, so I have no qualms about that at all. I highly recommend Night Force. We're running three of them. If we had the extra income, I would be running five of them. And I'm sure Norm agrees with me. What do you think, bud? Absolutely. I love them. <laughs> um, this is the side shot. I have the foam version on here. And Bob was kind enough to lend us his um, one with the GoPro. So that is how we capture the video through scope cam for you. Um, I use an iPhone. It's finicky to get the, the um, brightness correctly. iPhones don't really like white, so a lot of the roofs that we shoot on, it's hard to get focus on, but it's doable. Um, and the GoPro ones are really, really expensive. So if you have one of these and are having trouble getting it to work like you want, just shoot us a message. Um, we're happy to help. It's not proprietary information on how to get an iPhone to focus well for your shooting. Um, we do it all the time. So that's her. Um, I should mention that what I usually shoot out of it is a 36 grain uh, Nielsen slug. I'm going to be trying the varmint knockers next. Uh, there's some really nice lightweight versions. Um, so 31 and a halfs are probably going to be run out of this and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, if it can eat them well, I would really like the extra velocity. Um, right now the 36s are leaving at 800 and 50 feet per second, I'd really like to be at 910 or so, which I think that those 31 and a half grains can get me. Um, when I shoot pellets, I usually turn it all the way down to low, um, shoot the light pellets in the barn so that I don't affect the uh, tin roofs. I'm going to come a little closer to Norm because I want to show you why the crown, where the crown shines. So as long as this isn't cocked, you can turn this down. So I go bloop, down to minimum, and then I turn the transfer port down to low, and I'm at 470 feet per second with a light pellet. Doesn't do anything to the barn roofs. It still kills pigeons as long as you hit them in the neck. Um, and then if I step back outside, I just kick it back up to 25 cal, spin the hammer spring adjuster back to max, and I'm shooting slugs at 860. This is the only gun that we have that can do this, um, and it's been prized for that quite a bit. Um, if the impacts could do that, there would be no question. I would never buy anything but an impact. But the fact that we can just drop power in this makes the crown still worth having. Um, that being said, it is a little bit behind in the power factor compared to the impact, and we'll get into that one next. 
there's nothing on our impacts um, that's different that you can't see. In other words, there's no internals that have really been changed except for one thing, and I'll get to that in a moment. On the outside here, we have a Crayford and Ellipse adjustable buttstock. Um, Norm has been in love with this. Um, one of the best additions for sure to the impact. Really, really nice. Um, the side shot magazine system is on here as well. And the Wicca gauge is on here because, to be frank, the two that came on Norm's guns were not that great. Um, and it was driving him crazy. He's a perfectionist and it wasn't giving him the right info. So we swapped those out and you've been really happy with those, right? I love it. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, so um, so if, if you're one of those people that get really frustrated with them, that's a good option. And I don't think that was all that bad. What what the Wicca cost? $50. $50. Bucks. So if it's really bugging you, fix it. Um, this is an Atlas knockoff. Um, it's not the official Atlas or anything. It works a lot like it, but it's nowhere near as smooth. Um, if you are really interested in this, you can send us a PM, but uh, I'm sure you can figure that out on Amazon. It's no big deal. Yeah, and the uh, cost of that one there is only $40. Right, yeah, so. so big difference in price. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a little bit of a difference. Yeah. Um, again, we're Night Force on top. We're prepped for the side shot um, camera. Um, this uh, particular gun was the one that Bob was shooting, um, wasn't it? Or no, no? Nope. no, it was the other one. Okay. Um, so we also have this prepped for the side shot cam. Um, we can run just about anything we want, whether it's the, the phone one or the GoPro one, because it all hooks up the same. Um, this gun, we're shooting 36 Nielsen's again. Um, and we, I think you're definitely switching to varmint knockers with the, the lighter for the bird pop, aren't you? <laughs> yes, and they are shooting at 903 to 906 feet per second. Yeah, and... Uh, without the MK2 kit. Right, yeah, they're without the MK2 kit. So this gun is not powered up. No. Um, we've maxed this gun out, oh, and yeah. that's why we need to tell you about one thing that we replaced inside. Um, the C3 bumper on both guns, um, both impacts. We've taken the regs up, we've maxed out the hammer springs, we've done everything that we could um, to get more power out of it and still keep it stable and tuned. Um, all that back and forth, and there was a lot of it. I mean, I think, Norm, we probably changed the tunes on these guns oh, six or 12 times, times yeah. I, each, yeah. you know. Um, I did the same thing to my crown. Um, I just got lucky, and it hasn't, <laughs> hasn't blown a seal yet. Um, but know that... You know, if, if, if you push these guns to their max, there's a chance that you can break something, but the C3 bumper is like, Norm can do one in like five minutes. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's no big thing. Um, and Ernest, um, the genius that he is, came out with um, a Delrin version of that bumper. You put one of those in, you're never going to have to worry about it again. Yep. Um, for five so, bucks yeah. for the new one, you can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. I mean, yeah. if you're a tinker, yes. just take the one out before you blow it so you're not wasting a range day and just swap it in for the C3 from Ernest. Um, I won't review both impacts because, or go over both impacts because they're the same. Yeah. Um, they are exactly the same. We are probably going to throw some MK2 uh, funness into these guns. Um, just as a sneak peek, when we get Bob's gun here, we're probably going to take the barrel and probe off of this and put it in there just so that we know what our capabilities are going to be um, feet per second wise. But this thing's slinging them hard. Um, this has a 700 millimeter barrel versus my Crown, which has a 600. I know a lot of people wonder, is there a big difference? Um, not too much for killing. I mean, you can definitely go pesting with either one. You can go target shooting with either one. But if you're looking for that extra 30 to 40, I think you outpace me by, yeah, I would, well, 60 feet per second now, I think, with the varmint knockers. About that, yep. Yeah, but I'm going to be joining you, I think, by shooting those lighter slugs. Exactly. So, um, yeah, you can you can skin the cat a bunch of different ways, but if you're craving speed and long range, I highly recommend going with the 700 millimeter barrel. We get asked that all the time, and there's no question that's the one. And I'm telling you right now, this is still a short gun. Yeah. My crown, with that extended, is long, but I carry it happily and kill birds past 200 with it often, so I have nothing bad to say about her either. So. And, and I might add that on both of the um, impacts, we have Donnie FLs, yeah. which uh, are just, dumb. they speak for themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they speak That's for themselves. Even, I didn't even mention it because it's such, so yeah. there's, it's synonymous. Right. Um, yeah, the Donnie FLs quiet these things down big time. Um, 
the the crown has a shroud on it an extendable shroud and that does work um i think it would be better with the donny fl i think it would be quieter um and i may actually swap one onto mine but um we live in new york so we had some weird hunting rules um so we can pest with silencers or moderators or whatever you want to call them but we can't actually go squirrel hunting with them so um, check your state laws, know what they are, and you might have to go back to a normal shroud during game seasons if you're in one of those not-so-free states. Um, and all of our guns, all the ones you see here, all have slug liners in them. That's true, yeah, because the slug liners um, shoot pellets great. Yep. Like. I honestly, I know that they didn't have the tech um, when they were making them originally, but I wish they had shipped with them because I'm shooting the lights out under 500 feet per second in barns. They're not actually driving tax, but one inch at 50 yards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at that speed. I mean, come on. You know, it, it, what more can you ask? Absolutely. Uh, the heavies, that is one ragged hole at 50 yards, and it shoots the heavies at, um, mine shoots them at 890. Um, so you gotta be shooting them faster than that. I, I think I think mine were like nine twenty something, nine thirty. Yeah, they were smoking with that seven hundred millimeter yeah. barrel. Um, but yeah, these these slug barrels are shooting everything that we throw at them so far. The only thing that mine didn't love so far was the um, the super light um, varmint knockers. But that's not the slug's fault. That's because um, I didn't change my tune. Um, I didn't have enough slugs, so. I'm actually going to be getting some from Dale. He's a really nice guy, and uh, we're going to tune it up and get some get some faster slugs moving out of all of these. I think just for fun and to watch birds kind of uh, expand a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to another one. All right, so it's hot out there. Say hi, Shane. Hi. So uh, I had to come in anyway and be Mr. Dad anyway. So. Uh, we're going to get to part two next time. We're going to talk about the Wildcat. We're going to talk about the Dreamline. We'll hopefully covering the crown and the impact answers a lot of the questions that you guys have had. If you have any more questions, just contact us. Um, we out? We out. We out. Three, two. Done. Done, done.